When it comes to models of oligopolistic markets, the Sweezy model is a kind of a cherry on top. So let's get familiar with this cherry on top, Sweezy model. As you may know, there are four major players on the mobile market in Poland. One of them being Play. Imagine that you are the CEO of Play and you would like to increase your revenues. The question now is, would you rather increase your prices or decrease your prices to get higher revenues? The problem is not very complicated because if you still remember the concept of price elasticity of demand, then you should uh, remember that changes in the price would influence total revenue depending on the question whether the demand is elastic or inelastic. Just to remind you, if the demand is inelastic, then if you increase prices, total revenue would go up. If you decrease prices, total revenue would go down. If you face elastic demand, then price increase uh, results in decrease in total revenue and price decrease would actually push your total revenue up. So uh, my question, what would you do with prices to get higher revenue would actually be based on the question whether demand for mobile services offered by play is it elastic or inelastic. We don't know that, but we may uh, try to uh, consider two scenarios. It's either elastic or not. So let's assume that our demand is inelastic. If it is inelastic, then we should increase the price and then the total revenues would go up. If we increase prices for play subscribers, they would quickly find out that their mobile services are more expensive than the ones that are offered by T-Mobile or Orange. What would they do? Well, they would probably migrate to other um, companies. So they would leave you. So in fact, if you decide that you increase the prices, the quantity of your customers would decrease and actually, your total revenue wouldn't be higher, it would be lower. That would suggest that your demand is not inelastic. It seems to be elastic. If your demand is elastic, then you should lower the prices. So let's try to play the CEO of play and let's lower the price. If we lower the price, then obviously our competitors know that if their prices are higher, their customers would go to us. So they would quickly respond with lowering their prices to the level comparable to our. Then if you decreased your prices, then you get less from one customer and the number of your customers actually did not increase because others followed your move. So they also decreased their prices. So you didn't gain any additional people. Your total revenue is lower again. That would suggest that your demand is not elastic. How is it possible? How could it be not elastic and not inelastic at the same time. So what is actually the elasticity of the demand for mobile services? That is an interesting question. That is an interesting question and this is what a Sweezy model is about. Because the Sweezy model actually acknowledges the fact that the elasticity of your demand can be twofold. It could be different 
when you increase the price and the difference when you decide to decrease the price. As a result, you can see high elasticity when you move your price in one way and very low elasticity when you move your price the other way. Uh, the model is a bit complicated. The graphical representation is here. And if you actually watch our uh, lectures very carefully, then you will find this graph pretty familiar. Okay, So let's draw it. That's quantity and the price. And this is D1. This is the demand. As you can see, this demand is pretty horizontal. That means it is highly elastic. And this is demand D2. And this D2 is much more vertical, which means it might be more inelastic. Each of those two demand curves can actually produce for us marginal revenue. So you can find marginal revenue here. And you can find marginal revenue of the second demand. And you are precisely at the intersection between D1 and D2. So if you want to increase your price, then you start moving on the D1 curve. And this is highly elastic. If you want to decrease your prices, then you start moving on D2, which is highly inelastic demand. So if you want to increase your prices, then marginal revenue resulting from D1 should be important for you. If you decrease your prices, then marginal revenue resulting from D2 is the marginal revenue that is of interest for you. As you can see, this uh, marginal revenue is kind of not complete. There is a gap here. And within this gap, you can have marginal cost. So if you want to increase your prices, then you would see that for any price increase, your marginal revenue is bigger than marginal cost. Therefore, you should actually increase quantity and lower the price. If you want to lower the price, then you will see that your marginal cost is bigger than marginal revenue, suggesting that you should lower the quantity and increase the price. So as you can see at this point, the point of intersection between those two demand curves is your equilibrium point. There is no incentive for you to move up on the D1 or down on the D2 curve because the difference between marginal cost and marginal revenue will suggest you that you should go back to the E point where is your equilibrium with your quantity and with the price that you have. So this is, this is the situation of this play CEO. He says, OK, I should neither increase my price nor decrease it, because whatever I do, it will be a change for worse. So if you are in this situation, whatever you do, it would change your position for worse. You stay where you are. And this is your, and this is your equilibrium. What is interesting here is that normally, whenever marginal cost changes, businesses would react to that. For any uh, market structure that we had so far, you had this profit maximization rule, MR equals MC. Therefore, if MC changes for some reason, then the solution of this MR equals MC would change as well. Right, so that would uh, make you uh, produce different output or charge different prices or both. 
But here you can see that we can actually uh, move this marginal cost a little bit and nothing would change. If marginal cost shifts like here to the left, but it is still within this gap, there is no reason for you, there is no incentive for you to change your production from Q and to change your price from P. So, Sweezy model shows uh, some source of stability for oligopolistic markets. Even if marginal cost changes, like going up or down, shifting to the right or to the left, within a certain range, the range of this gap in marginal revenue, within this gap, it does not provoke the business to change the output or to change the price. This kind of stability uh, you can see, for instance, in petrol stations. Uh, when you look at the prices of oil, those prices are very volatile. They change very uh, quickly over day. There are many, many uh, different prices for crude oil every day. But the prices in your local petrol station will only change if this price of crude oil changes significantly up or down. Then you see that if this gap was exceeded, then the petrol station would change the prices they display, right? And your fuel would become cheaper, more expensive. But they do not change it every hour, every quarter. They don't change it every day. They change it every few days probably. Okay? This is this is why Swizzy model works.